take this damn thing off. No, I ain't gonna take it off now. But uh, just wanted to see what this whole thing here was about. All right, I probably shouldn't be on the grass, but I did want to at least capture this. I got the men of World War One, World War Two. Now they set this one off to the side, but it's uh, neat looking. All right, let me get up off the grass. Oh, this this is all courthouse. You want to walk in, you step through them big doors. Although typically we going through the back. All right. So it said, lest we forget. And if I could get back on the grass. Directed by the people of Lee County through the efforts of Lottie Green, chapter of UDC, AD 1913. Okay. And uh, Confederate dead. In memory of the of Lee County's Confederate soldiers. This isn't necessarily Robert E. Lee. Let me get up off the grass because I know I'm attracting a little bit of attention. Well, people should pay attention. Yeah, look at me, goddammit. Now, I ain't know what the cannon is about. There's nothing written on it. It's nothing scribed on it at all. Nice war memorabilia. Uh, but, yeah. I guess they, they didn't quite put Robert E. Lee up there, but, uh, this here is in memory of Lee County's Confederate soldiers. And that is the Lee County Courthouse. All right, so we had the World War II. Little monument off there in the background and over here is where we got the flag. Set of flags here. And then this one they dedicate men of the Vietnam era who died while serving in the armed forces of the United States. It's on August 5th, 1964, May 7th, 1975. Has a few names on there. Let me see if I can walk around here. Make sure there's nothing else going on. Man, it's a big ass cicada. Alright, so yeah. Not General Robert E. Lee exactly. But nonetheless, the message is clear. That is who we choose to honor in Lee County. 
Nah. I ain't necessarily got a problem with your heritage. But yeah, I do. I do. Because none of this had to be. All you had to do was treat people with respect. Treat people as though they were human beings. We would be all right. Now instead we treat people like animals, less than human. These folks, these folks fought for the right. They fought for the right to be able to enslave. This is what we have. This is our representation. She got rid of all of the people all the folks driving. That would be what have been left. Alright. says this was laid out on land acquired by Dr. Jacques Bishop. In 1824, a post office was established here. The town was chartered in 1888. When Lee County was organized in 1902, commemorating General Robert E. Lee, it became the county seat. So, uh, that's all you had to do, huh? Just co commemorate a, a Civil War traitor, essentially. Hey, that's what it is. That'll be the first thing people say. It's people died. Yeah, people, people died. Alright, I'm gonna see if I can take a picture of this back there. Alright, so I um, did my little walk and come back to my vehicle and there's this uh, truck parked on the side, black truck, someone's inside, I don't know if you can see it. You can't see it from this angle, but um has the black flag with the blue stripe in it so uh if he ain't police he's uh one of their supporters crazy thing is i'm out here in broad daylight so i, I ain't doing nothing crazy i'm just taking some photographs but it's interesting it's interesting that's all i'm saying and just in doing a little bit of research, and I do appreciate for those of you who sat through the full eight minutes of me walking around pointing out stuff, but just a little bit of research because I wanted to know who this Dr. Jacquez Bishop is or was, right? Uh, because this little signage, uh, you know, didn't 
uh, spare us letting us know, you know, why we call it Lee County, who it was named after. You saw the edifice that was built up in his honor. And, you know, I don't I don't think I actually pointed it out while I was walking, but you could see clearly that uh, the the Confederate soldiers, that monument that was erected also referred to them as heroes. And I, I'll show you a little piece of the screenshot there, what I could crop out for you to see there. I read all of that earlier previously, but you could actually see it actually says heroes. Like that is what they meant to the people who decided that they were going to create all of that stuff there that you see in front of the courthouse. But nevertheless, just doing a little bit of reading, you find that uh, there was uh, colonization that took place, although they refer to it as European settlement. And they say that there was a man by the name of William Singleton who purchased a 465 acre tract from a Daniel Carter. And Mr. Singleton and his wife, Francis, operated a tavern and, you know, they did that for some years. And then soon after uh, everyone passed, the family went ahead and sold the property to a Dr. Jaquez Bishop. All right. And uh, he operated a general store uh, from 1821 to 1837 under the name of C&C Campbell and Co. So, you know, for any of you folks that come across those uh words those 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 company names understand that you know some of that has some history that oftentimes can be tied way back to the deep south on a side note just in my researching i also found that around the time that they decided to uh change the area to quote-unquote lee county making bishopville the county seat uh there was a paper called the Bishopville Leader. And shortly after, in the same year, there was a Lee County Vindicator. Both of them got together and eventually morphed into what was called the Lee County Messenger, which in the 80s, 1982, they say evolved into the Lee County Observer. Now, a lot of things you'll notice, guys, especially when it comes to the South, you'll notice some sort of change, some sort of something that took place in the early 1980s because that seems to be the the year that America said, okay, for all of you guys waking up or coming in here, uh, we are a free nation and we respect everyone's right. And of course, they only had a few flimsy laws that they put on paper, uh, but overall, that's what ended up happening and of course, we all know that that is a lie. If you've been paying any attention to what's been taking place over the past few weeks, months, hell, years, if you've been paying attention long enough, you'll notice that, you know, whatever people claim took place between the 1970s and 80s really didn't amount to much in the grand scheme of things. But nevertheless, uh, getting back to what I was talking about uh Mr. Jaquez Bishop ended up marrying into a slave family. Now, this isn't to say that he didn't own slaves already, but if you are looking for some sort of definitive proof that shows that the founders of many of these areas and territories and townships that you guys just kind of take for granted, they were founded with folks who engaged heavily in racism and white supremacist practices. And slavery, whether folks like it or not, was one of those practices. And you can see here at the bottom, if you've had the time to read while I've been ranting, uh, you had one of the grandmothers. Uh, this was the will of Hannah Kimbrough, mother of Elizabeth Kimbrough Benton. Uh, Elizabeth Kimbrough Benton uh, was married to Lemuel Benton, and I will get on him here shortly. But she writes, I give and bequeath to my granddaughter Penelope Bishop, wife of Dr. Jaquez Bishop of the District of Darlington and the state of South Carolina, 
one male slave named Harry, notice there's no last name, to her and her heirs forever. Guys, this wasn't no indentured servitude kind of deal. This wasn't you worked for seven years and we give you your freedom papers. This was forever. This was till you die, slave. And I don't know what may have become of this slave named Harry, but I am certain that if given the opportunity, he was able to procreate and produce more children for the slave masters to be sold off to other areas for, you know, however much they sold these slaves for. And let's not kid ourselves when you're bequeathing slaves to people as part of a, of a, I, I'm not sure, engagement gift, although this was part of a will. Um, you know, that, that's, that's nothing to shake your leg at. These people became filthy rich, in my opinion, off of the free slave labor that they were able to take advantage of. Now, above, you'll notice that they talk about the children of this marriage, and this is the marriage uh, between uh, Lemuel and Elizabeth Kimbrough Benton. And you can see that they had nine children. There was a John, there was another Lemuel, there was a Buckley, an Alfred, and then they had five daughters, Clarissa, Charlotte, Grisilda, Gilly for short, okay. Elizabeth and Penelope. Like they were they they almost had a whole squad on both sides, really. Yet when when the grandmother died, obviously she left a slave remaining. But when the father died, he left Miss Penelope uh some of his inheritance, some of his estate, and it says Aside from his patriotic and silver service, Lemuel Benton was a successful plantation owner and cotton farmer. When he died in 1819, Penelope Bishop received $5,000 from her father's estate. Now, before I get into what that amounts to today, it should be pointed out that this cat Lemuel Colonel Lemuel Benton was a quote unquote revolutionary war patriot. Uh, he was a major of the Shara regiment. Like this guy was known. He was prominent, right? And they were him and his family as a result, knee deep into slavery. That cannot be ignored. Now, when you do the math by today's standards, and this was, you know, quick Google search, and it could actually be more. $5,000 in 1819 today is worth over just over a hundred thousand dollars. Now, granted, that ain't, you know, Donald Trump, give me some money to start up a business and I'll make it work kind of deal. But a hundred thousand dollars, there aren't too many black individuals that can actually say that. And part of the reason why was, you know, Lemia was able to pass stuff down to Penelope, Harry, the slave couldn't pass nothing down. He just worked till he died. That was it. So when folks come along and like to act and pretend as though they can understand why folks are talking about reparations and, and they're wanting to bring up, well, none of you were slaves today and none of my people's like, I ain't trying to hear that. And I mean, the fact of the matter is this can no longer be ignored. Now, I do know that we are looking for tangibles. Uh, changing Lee County to some other name isn't necessarily a tangible. And if we're going to change everything, we should even examine Bishopville. But again, changing that isn't necessarily a tangible, but it would be a significant start. And it's an excellent way to gauge your local areas because some areas, these white supremacists have, you know, laid down the towel or maybe they've died out or maybe they've just become too cowardly and they're not out there trying to make a whole bunch of noise with the things that you're seeing taking place in some of these southern states. Other areas, oh, they will defend it to the T. Now, you saw at the end of the video when I was walking through, I made it in my vehicle. Now, literally, if you pay attention, 
I say I'm going to go ahead and cross the street, see if I could take some photos. Um, not to point out what I drive, but you can see my vehicle off to the side parked. There is nothing there, right? I go across the street, take a couple of photographs. Then I go back towards my vehicle. It, it wouldn't have been no more than five minutes. By the time I started to make my way back towards my vehicle, there was a truck parked there, as I described, and they had a little flag um, that we see often enough in some areas. It looks like a black and white American flag, but there is one prominent blue stripe going right through the middle horizontally. And I look at that as a, 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 a basic sign that whoever that was was either police or very friendly towards the police and i'm not sure whether they were called up i'm not sure if they were alerted somehow uh i i don't know i'm not even sure if they were police i just know that it confirmed i was being watched uh as i walked around the courthouse i didn't see any cameras on that building it's a very old building doesn't mean that they didn't have something in the trees or possibly something staged across the street at the end of the day it doesn't matter as i stated in that portion of the video you know, i wasn't doing anything i was minding my own business and you know if they want to pull me over for anything they have to be extremely careful not that they're um you know not to be violating my civil rights so in any case um i don't know you guys let me know what you think about all of this i feel as though this has been a very long time coming. It feels as though it should have been something I should have done a long time ago. And I kind of wonder why no one else has. Uh, but you guys let me know how you feel about everything. My name is Otomir. Holla at me. Peace.